All right, today we got a ranking video of some of the best ETFs on the market. I'm gonna be changing the format a little bit. So instead of me handpicking a few great ETFs and laying out my case on why I think it's the best, showing you all the fact sheets and all that boring stuff, rather we're going to use the power of group wisdom on the internet. And the way I want to go about doing this is to look into the major investing themes. So things like growth, momentum, value investing. And then within those categories, we're going to see which ETFs are the most popular. And then we're going to see how it stacks up against the S&P 500. And hopefully by the end of this, we all have a bit more knowledge when it comes to investing. Now, before we jump into this, I would appreciate a like on the video. It helps out the channel and the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're here because the YouTube algorithm recommended this video to you, first of all, hi, my name's Nick. And second of all, go ahead and subscribe because it's only a matter of time before YouTube stops recommending the channel. Okay, so when it comes to ETF categories, the main ones that I found are momentum, value investing, which is also very similar to dividend investing, more on that later, and options slash income strategy, because in this current environment, I think this is an extremely important strategy to consider. And finally, that leaves us with a growth approach. Now, if you want a more simplistic approach, the best strategy is really just an overall market strategy. So buying the S&P 500 or VTI, which is the total US market. These act as the benchmark to beat because it's the total market. And spoiler, it's very hard to actually beat this very simple strategy. And the popularity confirms this. VTI and VOO are two of the most popular ETFs on the market. I wanna mention that you shouldn't invest solely based off of popularity, although there is something to be said about where money goes in the market. It's usually a pretty insightful measure to look at. And getting back to these more specialized ETF strategies, most of the time people have VTI or VOO as the core of their portfolio, and then they choose one of these ETFs to have more exposure to a specific style. All right, but let's dive right into this. So I'm going to be using the ETF database. This is an extremely useful resource. And what they do is they compile these long lists of ETFs that follow a specific strategy. So this is the list for the high momentum ETFs. If we want to, we can sort this by year to date price change. So we can see the best performing ETFs within this class, but I'm gonna to stick to the popularity contest by the assets under management. So by far the biggest momentum ETF is MTUM. This is by iShares and it's their momentum factor ETF. And if we take a look at some of the other names on this list, they tend to split it up by market cap. So here's a mid cap momentum fund. This is a small cap momentum fund. So for my purposes here, I just took two of some of the most popular names. So I grabbed MTUM along with DWAS, which is that small cap version. And overall, the performance is very nice. Over the past five years, MTUM is up 142% and the small cap momentum fund is up 147%. The expense ratio is definitely the lowest on MTUM and the dividend yield isn't a main focus, but it is 0.48%. And stacking MTUM against the S&P 500 over the past five years, it actually has outperformed the market by a healthy margin. Something to note is that the volatility is definitely more than the market. And if we zoom into just the past 12 months, lately it has been underperforming the market, mostly due to this increased volatility. And if we wanna look at the overlap between the S&P 500 and MTUM, there is a 21% overlap. And if you want, you can pause the video and look at this because this highlights the major differences between the two ETFs. So momentum investing can be a very fascinating strategy. A lot of people are inadvertently a momentum investor. And I think these momentum ETFs can actually work pretty nice in conjunction with VTI, just to give you more exposure to different trends and well, momentum in the market. The next category here is value slash dividends. I'm grouping these two together because they have way more overlap than I would have thought. So if you take a look at the value ETF list, we have some dedicated value ETFs as well as a mixture of just random stuff. So the first name here is actually an energy sector specific ETF. If we move down on the list, we see a utility sector ETF. And that makes sense because these are value plays indirectly. We do have some dedicated value ETFs like this one, IWS, which is a mid cap value play, but we also even see those dividend funds here like DVY and SPYD. If we take a look at VTV, which is one of the most popular dedicated value ETFs and compare it versus VYM, which is a dedicated dividend ETF, there's actually a 65% overlap. 
And that makes a lot of sense if you think about it because dividend paying companies are usually very stable, reliable, non-exciting blue chip companies. And taking a look at two of the most popular dedicated value ETFs, VTV and VONV, which is based off of the Russell 1000 value index, they actually have very high dividend yields just as a side effect. So VTV is a dividend of 2.19% and VONV is 1.77%. Comparing that versus the Momentum ETFs, these have very low dividend yields in comparison. And because I'm grouping them together, let's take a look at the dividend list right now. And here we have very familiar names like VIG, VYM, and SCHD. So if we take a quick overview of the value slash dividend sector here, there's tons of overlap. So VTV has a dividend yield of almost 2.2%, and in the past five years, it has appreciated 83%. And comparing that versus the dividend option, VYM, the dividend is just a bit more at 2.8% with very similar total returns. Although I have to mention SCHD is of course my favorite dividend ETF, even if it is slightly less popular with assets under management of 27 billion versus 48 billion. And if we compare VTV and VYM versus the market, it does fall behind. Over the past couple of years, value and dividends have slightly underperformed the market. Although in the past 12 months, it's kind of the inverse of the momentum ETFs because here they outperform the market by a small margin. And in terms of the overlap with the market, VTV is around 46% and VYM, the dividend ETF, is a bit less at around 33% overlap with the general market. All right, now the next category are what I'm all about, and these are the option-based income ETFs, otherwise known as buy right ETFs. And these generate income by utilizing a covered call strategy. By far the most popular ETF on this list is QILD, which writes at the money covered calls on the NASDAQ 100. We also see its sister ETFs XYLD and RYLD, but DIVO comes in at number two on this list. So coming back to my ranking system, that's why I had to go with QILD and DIVO in this scenario. But the performance between these two funds is radically different. DIVO is definitely a much better all-around package when it comes to an ETF, but QILD goes to the extreme with a very high dividend yield. It's one of the highest on the market. And I think that's why QILD is so much more popular. Not because people go all in on this fund, it's because they mostly invest in something like VTI, which is way more responsible. But then in order to adjust the income level of their portfolio, they add some funds to something like QILD. So keep that functionality in mind. It might not be a fair one-to-one -one comparison, but this is the performance over the past five years compared to the market. And zooming into the past 12 months, this is the performance. All right, now that leaves us with the growth sector. And here, the two most popular funds are QQQ and VUG. They're very similar to one another, 61% overlap, and here are the major differences. We all know that over the past decade, growth has been the most successful strategy. There's no guarantee that that's going to continue into the future, but looking at the past five years' performance, both of these funds have had great returns. And so far this year, the market has actually outperformed these growth funds by a small margin. So this could be a small indication that the trends are beginning to change. And comparing VUG versus the market, they actually have 55% overlap. And QQQ, I believe, is a little bit less. Yeah, so QQQ is a 41% overlap with the market. So there you have it, guys. These are some of the most popular ETFs on the market, broken up by category. So we have the categories of momentum investing with names like MTUM. We have value and dividend investing because they have lots of overlap, very similar dividend yields between the two of them, and total returns. We also have options and income with names like QILD and DIVO, as well as traditional tech growth names like QQQ and VUG. As mentioned in the beginning, I think having a majority of your assets in the general market is a smart move, and then allocating a portion to some of these strategies based off of any personal convictions you might have. A lot of people think growth investing is a no-brainer, and it's definitely a great way to go, although keep in mind, there's no guarantee of growth in the future. This graph right here shows dividends contribution to total return by decade, and in the past decade, the 2010s, growth has been phenomenal and dividends have been only a small portion of the return. But just one decade before in the 2000s, growth didn't do so well. It was a very flat decade in equity markets and most of the returns were found in income and dividend investing. So it's just something to keep in mind and always be diversified across all strategies and sectors. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you're still watching and enjoyed, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, all that YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.